I think platform economics, if we look at what is platform economics, uh, in former times you would call it markets, right? So every market in, a, in, in the city of Maastricht on a Friday is a kind of a platform. Uh, in a sense, every, every intermediary uh, a, a shopping mall is a kind of a platform. A grocery shop is a platform where the suppliers of groceries, of food, of, of milk and whatever you meet and whatever are basically bringing the things together and, and customers can come in and buy a basket mm -hmm. with, with different things. Mm -hmm. So this idea, so in a sense, platform economics is, a, is, 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 uh, is in a sense uh, the digital version of markets. Right? Yeah. And you would call them in the 90s or in the beginning of this century, you would call them electronic markets. So you would not talk about platforms and so on. Yeah. Now what happens, you make it digital, but by making these things digital, by having digital marketplaces, you get completely new possibilities. And right? you get a completely different reach. Uh, um, markets, you see, the reason that we have markets is usually to overcome information asymmetries and to, to, to do matchmaking between providers of goods or services and consumers of goods and services. What, what do you mean by information? Asymmetry. That uh, so so I mean if you go to if you go to a shop right if you would to have to adjust firstly if you would have to do the match by finding a farmer that uh, grows your preferable vegetables or tomatoes you have a have an enormous search cost at the same time you have an information asymmetry you don't know what the good farmers are maybe in your village in your town you can find out. Okay. Okay, yeah. But you have a lot of we have regularly in 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 in, in, all, in our economy. Uh, the, the consumers of goods have a problem to get to really be well informed about the quality and other mm -hmm. issues and wh where can I find a good. Now a marketplace basically resolves that to some extent. So if you go to a marketplace in, in Maastricht where they sell fresh food, you, you rely on that this, uh, that this trader there, he went first to farmers or he went to a, a bigger market and bought then the food that he found best for his, for his customers. And he brings them to Maastricht, and then you have already a pre-selection, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 so so along this uh, along this match from from supply and demand, you have usually um, you have an information asymmetry. So it's, it's and it's it's so basic. So there's uh, there were economists who say, well, markets uh, basically um, remove all the information asymmetries, but in in reality, it's never true, and that you need marketplaces and so on. So and and uh, and platforms and, and marketplaces have the role of matching supply and demand and also helping both sides to 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 uh, to do better to be able to do well informed choices. Mm -hmm. Right and now there's always a pre-selection, right? Even if you go if you go to buy your clothes and even on the internet, but definitely uh, definitely if you go to a regular shop then uh, you, you don't see all, the, all what is on offer, you, you see a pre-selection, what somebody selected for her or his customers, right? yeah. with certain qualities, with certain, according to certain taste and so on. Yeah. So, uh, and platform economy basically gives completely new opportunities to, to, uh, to do matchmaking between uh, supply and demand. And also because we have algorithms involved, we have all the data involved, we can also add additional services, right? So uh, I think even in a traditional shop, uh, if you go, if, 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 if you stay with a grocery, if you had these small uh, uh, shops in the 50s and 60s and before that, or 70s still in, in this town, you would have probably a, a, a seller there who would say, who would a little bit know the taste of his customers and say, I, I got very tasty fresh, uh, fresh tomatoes yeah. and why don't you try them in ca in, in, in yeah. instead of the brand that you were, that you were trying before? Yeah. Because I know some others who bought them and that reported me back that it was very tasty, yeah. right? The same for, for every kind or a new kind of bread and so on. Yeah. Now in, on, an, on a platform that can be done in a digital way yeah. because all these recommender systems on the purchase pay. We might dislike it, we might dislike it because they push us in a certain direction or we don't see. But on the other hand, they also give added information. Yeah. So they basically cluster us 
they know our purchasing behavior and based on that they can make recommendations. Yeah. So almost the, the platform algorithms almost replace the friendly shopkeeper, right? Like in a way that I am I'm trying to I know what your behavior pattern is. Last yeah. week you bought soy milk. So you might be interested in this product. Exactly. Yeah. In some sense they replace they replace them. But then it comes to the question, yeah, can, are they replaceable? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are other dimensions. Uh, if I go, I go every Saturday to buy my, my fresh uh, uh, meat for, uh, and cheese at, at, at the same shop. And we can always talk a little bit what's going on in the neighborhood yeah. uh, uh, between now, uh, between today and, and, and last yeah. Saturday. This is not going to be seen on a platform. Yeah. So in a sense, I think replace is a very strong word, but okay. they take over part of the functionality that, that, yeah. that people in regular shops couldn't take. Well, uh, the general thing with the platform is uh, the, it's only successful if it gets enough customers and it, you, typically it has network effects, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, meaning that uh, any additional participant on the platform creates also value for the other participants. Yeah. Uh, so the total value that you have is basically uh, increasing quadratically in the in the number of participants. Yeah. Right. Uh, so if you if you just to see if you have if you have uh, two participants, uh, both might create value for each other. Right. If you have four participants, you have already six links among the four, so you get mm -hmm. six times as much yeah. uh, as much value out of it uh, in, the, in the interaction of the yeah. individual members. It's never completely that everybody interacts with everybody, and that is this: you you create a network of users, and they are all linked more or less with each other, and the network has 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 uh, maybe has much, many more has quadratically many links than than it has nodes in the network. Yeah. So it's uh, can draw it, and you can convince yourself. Yeah. Now, so 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 that is important to get to get this to get this network growing now. Um, and uh, if you start from scratch with one node or two or three or four participants, it's very difficult to convince them. So I think one thing is that you need in the very first, in the very beginning, you need to, somewhere there has to be already a network that, we, that you start with. Okay. So uh, to get this network externalities running. I was just reading this morning an article about Facebook and mm -hmm. uh, they were explaining that in a nice way. Facebook started at Harvard and they got they got next to Harvard, they got then quickly uh, um, uh, ma ma all the Ivory League universities yeah. in the US. But they had already communities. So this is a, a community of all the students, they yeah. help each other in further jobs and so on. So there was a community that was uh, digitiz digitized, yeah. but it was not starting from zero. Yeah. Right? Because and think I think starting from zero is really it's, it's very difficult. So yeah. you really have to get, you really have to work hard to get a first critical mass of people. Yeah. Uh, I think the other thing that is very important is to understand exactly in such a platform, to understand, to be very broad in understanding for whom do I create value. It, uh, so if you look, if you look at, uh, at, if you look simply as a search engine like Google, all right, uh, you have Google, you have all of us who are searching on Google mm -hmm. and you have the advertisement companies. Yeah. Right? And if you wouldn't have the advertisement companies, the thing would not work. Right? But we are not willing to pay for a Google search, uh, even not a micro cent uh, every, every search. Yeah. Lo most likely not. And then Google would not earn money. So the advertisers make the thing flying. Yeah. Facebook the same. Right? Whether you like it or you don't like it, yeah. it it's like that. Yeah. Right? And you have many, many examples where, where basically the, um, you, have to, you have to think broad on who is, so we have a platform, it generates data, it, it has participants, but are there any other organizations out there that could, for whom we could create value out of this system that we want to create, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, it, uh, and, and maybe that value that you create out there is much more valuable than the, than the original participants in the yeah. system. And if it is much more valuable, you might be able to charge these people out there. Mm -hmm. So if you get them in the boat and can convince them, they are funding the whole thing. 
right? Mm. So you have to think, you have to, and the platform has to think very broadly in, in, in whom do you want to get in, yeah. right? So like, uh, but even, so even if you look at Airbnb, right, it, uh, it's in, the sense, in some sense it's funny because in the first place, it created value for people who want to have, who don't want to stay in a hotel, who want to le- stay yeah. in a private setting. Yeah. Maybe they wanted, they didn't have the money to yeah. stay, uh, so they wanted to have a budget, uh, but there are sufficiently many budget hotels where you can stay in any place in the world, whether you want to stay there or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so in a sense, you get a bit more value. Or it also created value for people who have an apartment, right? Uh, and uh, but at some point it, it might they, they might they might get data about who is traveling it, it created negative values for the cities like Amsterdam so they get a difficult of the neighbors who yeah. don't uh, rent yeah. their apartment so but if you if you analyze the, the the Airbnb case you will see that it generates value or negative or positive value for many many more stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, you you might get insights in even hotel chains. You might get insights from Airbnb in demand for for staying in a particular price category. Mm-hmm. So I could easily imagine that a hotel chain would say, "Okay, I can satisfy that demand." Mm-hmm. It might even signal to them what kind of interior. Maybe you need hotels where every room looks different. Yeah. Uh, that you still have the feeling you are living in a private. Uh, you you are renting a private space there, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe they need smaller units. They say, well, it's better not to have one big building, but yeah. to have ten small buildings who look more. Yeah. Co- so there is a lot of information generated, and 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 these companies have to understand how this, uh, you, as, a, as a startup, as a platform provider, you have really to understand what is the value proposition for the and and to whom uh, the hell could I generate value, and then you have to understand. Are they willing to pay for that? Mm-hmm. Which kind of pricing mechanism do I offer to them? Mm-hmm. Do I ask them, you get my data for 10 years for free and please invest in my company? Mm-hmm. Do I say, I, I charge you uh, on demand for, for additional information that I send you regularly? Mm-hmm. So then you have to see how, how do you generate that value? Mm-hmm. You also have to, sh- to see how do you share value? If you, have, if you need partners who cont- contribute to your... See, that's one thing that from on, on the demand side. If you're on the supply side, you might say, well, if I, if I combine my initial idea with that company and that company, together we, uh, we get to a situation one plus one is three. Mm-hmm. So if, if we connect, if, if we build a consortium of different companies and we, we, we create, then we are in a much stronger position to create value. Right? But then you have to understand how, do, how are we going to share the cake that we hopefully are going to earn. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So you have also to, to look at that. And I think, I think analyzing these things, or at least creating the awareness, it's also for me difficult to then make a formula and say, do it like this. Yeah. But at least uh, understanding this awareness on, on value creation, uh, how do I extract that value of the participants? How do I share among those who may cost or who have, who, who have earnings in a, in a fair way, in a way that everybody is incentivized to stay in the system mm-hmm. and so on? How do I, how do I get uh, network effects running? How do I trigger so that maybe I have to invest a little bit to get these additional people in, mm-hmm. but then I cannot invest forever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and yeah. I think all this setting that that is a kind of that, yeah. I think these are these maybe these are the principles where where you can then case by case discuss it and where where an economist or have a little bit of an economic training or at least I learned it by doing uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, over the last twenty years reading and talking and, and making sense out of it so by these conversations you can get you can trigger people in that yeah. direction. Yeah. I, I guess there will be a saturation. I, I don't think that it is going to be to die out. Yeah. No. What, what, what might happen is that, um, that people at some point might get disappointed by the platform. That they say, this is too much individual and I'm getting tired of... Uh, I've looked at Facebook now for 10, year, for ten, ten months or two years mm-hmm. 
and somehow now I figure out I don't feel better informed. I'm going back to listen to uh, to TV, or I'm, uh, I'm 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 going to read newspapers again, or whatever. So at some point, so I think I think uh, there 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 are. Certain things also c can go over, right? Uh, uh, because of technology, because of people don't like it anymore. It could also be that, I mean, there are cases in our life where, where uh, the legal framework changes or a in a sense also that a society takes a decision that we don't want that anymore, right? So, I mean, Facebook is certainly and other social networks are certainly now discussed very heavily. What impact do they have on the political system, on elections, and so on? Um, is it is it is it what what we intended to have? Should we uh, should we how how do we how do we deal with with the issue of uh, data privacy and the new European regu regulations? Uh, what kind of um, how do we implement them? To which extent do do we establish as a nation, as a European, as Europe or whatever, certain standards and say we 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 regulate things? And if you if you do these things, then they might have quite some impact on the current constellation of the companies. Mm -hmm. So I would not I would. Uh, I would be surprised if 10 years from now we have the same big four companies that we have right now, or big five. Okay. So uh, now, now Facebook, Google, Microsoft, uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon, and what was the, uh, uh, maybe I forgot one, are the, the biggest four companies in the yeah. world. Uh, that, they, that, that was not ever like that. Yeah. And for the same reason, uh, there could be other companies that are more important. Yeah. Right? See, because if one thing on that, these companies look enormously big. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with the number of employees that they have and with the sophistication of the technology that they have. Mm -hmm. They have only users. So, and they have advertisers who want to use them as a channel. Mm -hmm. And, and the data, right? Because I think the and data is the yeah, but the data, the data is it, it's it's a belief in the value of the data, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, it's not that the data has proven to be that valuable yet. I think there is much more belief than really proof of the data. Okay, yeah. yeah I thought because I the don't data think, will give where you go. To but that would it. mean that would mean that they can. I, I don't think that they can sell their data now already on a very very that that the, the, the what they if they sell data that this makes a major fraction of their revenue and it's a research question to the audience to find that out prove me wrong mm -hmm. I think that advertisement is still much more important than the data that they can sell okay. so but they are running already since 10 years so if if the data cannot be sold now would, why should it be uh, why should it generate major revenues in five or ten years from now yeah. right yeah. so it has to be proven it's a belief that the data has an enormous of value yeah. now if private protection if a privacy protection and uh, if the society as a whole comes to a discussion and say, we don't want, uh, if a majority of our people say, we don't want that they sell our data, we don't want to provide that data, we see little added value uh, uh, by, by what we share there to our friends, we can share it in other ways, mm -hmm. and, this data, and this data is trying out. Uh, and is also uh, people say, well, I'm I'm uh, I'm not looking that often at Facebook anymore. And they, are num they report numbers that it is this how it has been decreasing now. Then the advertisers will as quickly move away from these platforms as they moved into. Mm -hmm. The advertisers make rational decisions. Mm -hmm. So and and you can very quickly because it's nothing solid, right? It's an information product. Very quickly. The the the, uh, the 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 speed by which they were growing, they can also there could be a move to something else, to a new hype or whatever, yeah. and then they will they will shrink immediately yeah. to something that is smaller than General Motors or, or Volkswagen <laughs> or yeah. Toyota or whatever. So you think the the big I don't predict that. Yeah, but, but you think I, the biggest strength these big five have is the user. 
base. The user base and, yeah, and, the, inf and uh, the channel that they provide, they are media channels for advertisers. Yeah. And to a lesser extent, would, my guess would be the data that they have. Yeah. 